Naturally, oxytocin is formed in the supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus of hypothalamus and stored in posterior pituitary. It is released in response to parturition, coitus and or suckling. Now, oxytocin does two main things that is one is the contraction of pregnant uterus and second myoepithelial cell contraction resulting in milk letdown reflex. Among the drugs acting on the uterus, we have the drugs which stimulate the uterus and we have other sets of drugs which relax the uterus. The uterine stimulants are also known as oxytocics or ecbolics, while the uterine relaxants are known as tocolytics. The three main uterine stimulants that we are going to talk about are natural oxytocin, ergot derivatives and prostaglandins. Now remember about oxytocin that it will only act on the fundus and the body of the uterus, not the cervix. So this will help in uh, the labor, right? So remember that pregnant uterus in early pregnancy is fairly resistant to oxytocin. So these receptors gradually increase uh, during pregnancy and in the last half and near term there is a spike in oxytocin receptors. Oxytocin acts uh, on the uterus via IP3 DAG pathway increasing intracellular calcium levels and thus uh, causing contraction. Oxytocin also increases prostaglandins production by the uterus. In the breast, it will cause contraction of myoepithelial cells and cause milk ejection. In the CVS, it can cause hypotension at high doses and hypotension in turn will cause reflex tachycardia and flushing. In the kidney, oxytocin acts uh, the same way ADH does and cause, causes uh, fluid retention. Now, oxytocin can be used in the induction of labor and also in postpartum hemorrhage because it will contract the um, myometrium of the uterus and thus the blood vessels that are supplying the uterus will be contracted and blood loss will be less. They can also augment uterine contraction in difficult labor. They also help in milk letdown. Now, remember when oxytocin is used uh, to induce labor, with low doses of oxytocin, there is actually a period of complete relaxation between uterine contractions. So this is helpful to maintain blood flow to the placenta and the fetus. So there is no fetal asphyxia. But in large doses, what happens is that oxytocin can further increase the force and frequency of uterine contractions and thus can lead to fetal asphyxia or even fetal death. So that is one of the side effects of uh, oxytocin as well, that it can lead to uterine hyperstimulation. As well as it can cause water intoxication if large amounts of fluid is also infused along with oxytocin. A synthetic analog of uh, oxytocin known as carbitocin is used to prevent uterine atony after c-section and also to prevent postpartum hemorrhage by contracting the myometrium. The next uterine stimulants are ergot derivatives. Now if you remember from toxicology Ergot uh, was actually a poisonous uh, fungus and it used to cause smooth muscle contraction. So here we use it to contract the uterus. Ergometrine is a natural alkaloid of the fungus while methyl ergometrine is a semi-synthetic derivative. It is more potent action on the uterus. They will have action on the uterus by stimulating both the upper and lower segments of the uh, uterus. So they are not that helpful in the induction of labor. At low doses, they are okay, but at high doses, they will cause uterine tetany. In the GIT, they can cause peristalsis and in the CVS, they will cause vasoconstriction and thus increase the blood pressure, but at therapeutic doses, it's not very significant. Ergot derivatives can be used in postpartum hemorrhage because they will contract the myometrium and thus uh, stop the bleeding. They can also prevent the uterine atony after C-section, same as carbitoxin, carbitocin and they can also hasten the uh, involution of uterus when it is delayed. The adverse effects will be of course increase in blood pressure due to vasoconstriction in hypertensives and it also has a specific effect in decreasing secretion of prolactin and thus there will be a problem in lactation in the new mother. They are contraindicated in hypertensives, of course, in peripheral vascular disease because of its vas vasoconstriction property and also in sepsis, preeclampsia, that is actually increased blood pressure and proteinuria in a pregnant lady and that can lead to eclampsia 
and uh, convulsions because there is increased permeability of blood brain barrier and edema and all sort of that stuff. So it is uh, contraindicated in such cases. The next uh, uterine stimulants are prostaglandins of course. The prostaglandin analogs such as misoprostol, dinoprostone which are PGE1 and PGE2 analogs respectively can be used in ripening and dilation of the cervix for labor induction and PGE1 misoprostol will increase uterine contraction, uh, treat or prevent postpartum hemorrhage. Now oxytocin and prostaglandins collectively have a synergistic action because oxytocin as we know increases prostaglandins production but there should be a gap of about 4 to 6 hours between both of their administration. Coming to the uterine relaxants or tocolytics we have beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, oxytocin receptor blockers, prostaglandin synthesis inhibitors, MgSO4, progesterone, nitrox nitric oxide donors and halothane. Coming to beta blockers, we know that we have beta 2 receptors in the uterus which cause uterine relaxation by increasing intracellular cyclic AMP. Now beta blockers will block these receptors and the beta blockers that we can use are salbutamol, tabutaline and ritodrine. But the side effects of beta blockers will be there that is tachycardia, palpitation, pulmonary edema etc. So they are uh, contraindicated in diabetics and heart disease patients. Second are the calcium channel blockers for example nifedipine can be used. They will decrease calcium influx and thus uh, block uterine contraction. They have fewer side effects than the beta blockers. Next are oxytocin receptor blockers that is the chief drug is atosiban and it will cause relaxation and they have less side effects as well. Next are the prostaglandin synthesis inhibitors that is NSAIDs chiefly indomethacin. The NSAIDs are not really used to delay labor because of the side effect that they will cause premature uh, closure of the ductus arteriosus because they inhibit prostaglandin synthesis and prostaglandins keep it open. They can only be used uh, to cause relief for dysmenorrheal pain. MGSO4 has a depressive action on uterus, smooth muscles, CNS and myocardium. It can be used when eclampsia has a, a progressed to toxemia that is uh, high blood pressure and albuminuria in the pregnant patient and this can often lead to convulsions because of high uh, blood brain barrier permeability. So as it, it has a CNS depressive effect it can help with the convulsions as well. They are used when beta blockers are contraindicated and their side effects can be a hypotension, a decreased temperature, arrhythmias, CNS and respiratory depression. Progesterone is used to treat threatened abortion. Nitric oxide can also be used as a uterine relaxant but it will cause hypotension in the mother. And lastly, halothane which is an inhalational general anesthetic, it, will, it has a potent action on uterine uh, relaxation.